We love secret rooms in games. They're bizarre, they're usually filled with tons of in-jokes, and they're typically pretty hard to find. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and it's time for 10 Ridiculous Secret Rooms in Recent Games, Part 2. Now, Part 2 implies there's a Part 1, and if you're interested in the secret rooms in Mortal Kombat 11, RDR 2, Bloodborne Doom, Fallout 76, Dying Light, Hitman, Just Cause, Bloodstained, and Undertale, Part 1 is waiting for you after you get through this one so go check that out starting off at number 10 it's dying light 2's doom secret room which is wild this is a very recent game not even a month old and dying light 2 has a bizarre easter egg like the first dying light had one a uh, super mario brothers world 1 1 secret room but now that we have the sequel we're finding stuff big and bizarre in similar veins it's harder to get into this one though you find it by going to the basement of the vnc tower which you can access by taking the elevator and finding a door that is open for whatever reason. Now the door is locked until you actually beat the game, so that alone makes it a tougher secret room compared to the one in the first, which you find by just interacting with a green pipe on a roof. Now you open this door and you take the elevator to end up in this creepy demonic looking ritual room. There's five altars and if you want to see the Easter egg, you got to find five evil red docks hidden around the city and place them at the altars. That is an ordeal unto itself and the developers had a lot of fun hiding these things right in the edge of a bunch of like deadly chemical zones. If you get all of them and form the cables up like a pentagram, the secret's revealed. Uh, it's a Doom themed challenge room where you go nuts with the only gun in the game. It's modeled after the E1M one from the original Doom and there's even that zigzag hallway everyone remembers and many of the secrets are even exactly the same. I think that it's actually very similar to the Mario room in that it is very faithful to the original level. It's also interesting in Dying Light 1, they paid tribute to a classic level on consoles. Dying Light 2, classic level on PC. That's not even the only secret room in Dying Light 2 though. There's an entire hidden developer room as well that you can find by connecting cables while falling down the ledges of this tower you can fly into from the VNC building. I know that is a massive mouthful, but believe me, I just told you the shortest possible version of that. See our video about secrets in Dying Light 2 for the longer version. But the developer room is filled with a ton of in-jokes about Techland's previous games, posters, and even a thank you note to the player. It's just kind of a fun, but difficult to get to area. It is certainly worth finding though. And number nine is Pokemon Legends Arceus, the secret room there. Another very recent game with a secret room we weren't really supposed to find. Some curious players managed to find it. This is a dummied out room in the game that contains a lot of modern looking stuff like a beanbag chair, flat screen TV, and a Pikachu edition Nintendo Switch. It's probably supposed to be where the player starts off before being warped into the past, but for whatever reason, developers just seem to remove it, even though it's a fully detailed room. The fact it looks so finished suggests the room was removed late into development, but for whatever reason, we don't know. It's pretty rare to find a secret room we're not supposed to find, but this Arceus room has no standard entrances or exits, and the only way to access it is by using third-party tools to clip through the walls and find this place, so they definitely didn't want people to find it is what I'm saying. And number eight is Halo Infinite's Xbox room slash giant sandwich. One of the best things about Halo Infinite is the developers snuck a little bit of that bungee magic back into the game. There's a little more humor and a ton of weird, goofy Easter eggs to find. Most of them are kind of hidden in plain sight or out around the world, but two of them definitely count as secret rooms. The first we're going to talk about is this cave found over by the spire. You go inside, clear the first big arena room, and then grapple up to the top of this pillar in the center of the room. If you look from on top of this thing, you see a tiny little opening that's possible to grapple up into. That's where you find the giant sandwich. I mean, it's a giant sandwich. The next one is found in the northern part of the map where these hex-like structures, like with the other secret room, if you look in a very specific spot, you can find a tiny crag in the ceiling you can grapple up into. Inside this one is kind of an Xbox gaming room containing the OG Xbox and a TV with snacks all over the floor. These two rooms are basically perfect for this list. They're absolutely secret and they are very ridiculous.
And number seven is Watch Dogs Legion. I, I almost totally forgot about this one, actually. There's a really cool secret room to find in the third Watch Dogs game. This is one of those secret rooms where the solution sounds like it doesn't make any sense because the only way to actually get it is to follow the alternate reality game that's found completely outside of the game. So don't ask us why you have to do these random steps to unlock this place. You just do, and that's the best answer we can give. Um, east of the Millennium Bridge, there's this hidden way locked door. Just finding it naturally is something few people do, but to open it, you have to do something really specific. Uh, it only opens at 2 a.m., meaning you have to interact with the door right at 2 a.m. or you will miss it out. It's not MGS5. You can't smoke a cigarette and quickly switch to whatever time you want. Um, you just have to sit and wait if you miss it. Inside the place is the secret lair of Default, the hacker you fight in the original Watch Dogs. And if you explore the place, you can actually get his unique mask to wear. So this game actually has one of the best rewards for finding the secret room. The actual interior is uniquely decorated, but nothing totally crazy. Still pretty well buried, and this series doesn't really normally have stuff like this. And number six is Demon Souls on PS5 Secret Door. The original version of the game had a fair share of secrets, but the remaster, Bluepoint, snuck in uh, some new stuff. Probably the most infamous is the one we're talking about here. The new locked door you can find in the Boletaria Palace's third area that's impossible to get to unless you collect 26 of a new item called Ceramic Coins. These coins can't be found in the regular game. Instead, they're hidden away in the new Fractured mode, which mirrors the world of the game and generally makes things a lot tougher. That is not the end of it. You also have to have either a pure white or pure black world tendency for the coins to even start showing up, which is a whole other thing to deal with because there's a lot going on with world tendency in this game. Once you've got 26 ceramic coins, you can trade them with Sparky uh, the Crow. You get a rusted key, and that's what actually opens the door. So basically, very few people are getting in here. And inside, you get a set of penetrator armor, so uh, players can finally look like that guy if they want. It was a long required addition to the game, especially after Dark Souls made it so you can get the armor of many the boss enemies as rewards so honestly it's a great addition the actual requirements to unlock the door are ridiculous but if you love demon souls it's probably worth the effort at number five is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order's Yoda Room. Uh, for such an IP-driven game, you'd think there wouldn't be much beside a lot of callbacks and references because it's Star Wars. And yeah, those are there. But there's also a lot of plain weird stuff that the developers snuck in. Probably the weirdest is this oddball origami room that can only be found by going through the Temple of Eorim all the way up to when you roll the ball to the exit. But instead of leaving, you make a tricky jump down to a previously visited area. If you manage to grab the wall and slip through this narrow passage, you find a room containing a, a bunch of Star Wars papercraft things. Uh, they're either really low poly models or they're papercraft. I, I don't know exactly. The most prominent of these is these big Yodas. I, I don't know why these are here. Don't know exactly what to make of it. It's in a completely counterintuitive spot and the rewards you get here are nothing except a bunch of silly looking Star Wars creatures, but it's still pretty great. And number four is Death Stranding's Higgs's house. A little secret that's easy to miss in Death Stranding. It's actually possible to visit the hideout of Higgs, the gold mask bad guy you spend a lot of the game contending with. The funny thing about this one is the place isn't all that hard to find and actually has a series of missions associated with it, but it, you spend most of the game not even knowing the place is the home of Higgs. If you return here after beating the game, you can actually go inside and explore uh, and the place is wall-to-wall -wall conspiracy boards and crazy messages and there's like a memory chip that gives you time of information about what the guy's deal actually is. For players really invested in the story, it is a gold mine because Higgs is a relatively mysterious character for most of the game, and this is the only way to find out a lot about him. So this secret room is in a location that's not normally secret, and there's no reason to return to this place after the game ends, but there is an absurd contradictory explanation that could only be in a Hideo Kojima game. It's not exactly ridiculous inside, but some of these messages in the walls are a little off. And number three is the secret egg rooms in Deltarune. Like Undertale before it, Deltarune is a game filled with secrets and mysteries, and of course that means there's a secret room or two hidden in here. Even though the game isn't finished, there's a lot of find in the chapters that are currently available, including some mysterious eggs that can only be found in strange rooms that I really have no idea how anyone was supposed to find. Like this one in chapter two, where you go down a secret path and survive getting run over by an annoying dog, and uh, then you end up in this dead end room with a mysterious mess 
message on the wall saying there's a room in between. And if you interpreted that as go back and forth between this room and the other one until you randomly appear in a new room, good for you. Clearly this game was made for people with brains like yours. It wouldn't be so hard to figure out if it only took a few exits, but oh no, you gotta keep going way past the point where it feels like nothing's gonna happen. In this room between, you could find a strange tree and an invisible figure hiding behind it that you could talk to. They give you an egg, which may or may not have some significance. We don't know. Chapter one had a similar room with a different egg in it. Whole thing's pretty weird. At this point, we have no idea. This could be an elaborate troll for all we know, but it's intriguing and it's definitely gonna keep us around for the rest of Delta Room. And number two is Blasphemous. Um, in the previous list, we mentioned Bloodstained and its secret arcade room. So for this one, let's talk about another relatively popular retro-inspired Metroidvania. Blasphemous is a pretty bizarre and grotesque game. Most of its secrets are a little more lore-related than anything else, but this secret room totally breaks the immersion of the game world and lets you play a Blasphemous arcade game. Compared to all the weird and nasty stuff you find in this game, a regular old arcade cabinet feels out of place, and that only adds to the ridiculousness of this secret. Just getting this thing is a huge challenge. You have to find this secret room in the desecrated cistern that's hidden in the already hard to get room that requires you to have a special item that makes your character unaffected by water. Getting that thing on its own is very obscure, so basically you have to find a secret to find a secret to find a secret. Go into the secret room, you'll find an arcade cabinet called Alcazar of Grief, a play on Castlevania games naming schemes like Symphony of the Night or Aria of Sorrow, blah blah blah. And if you insert some money, you play a lo-fi D-make of the game, complete with a chiptune soundtrack. It's a great looking area with a lot of work put into it and absolutely worth hunting down if you're a hardcore secret finder. And finally, at number one, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War The Dancing Zombies Room. There's plenty of secret rooms out there that are ridiculous because of how hard to find they are, but few as ridiculous uh, as this one just because of its straight-up silliness. The first zombie map for Black Ops Cold War is called Die Machine. Every zombies map has an Easter egg, a big secret set of objectives a player can compete. They truly want to beat a map, but they usually hide a few extra secrets and side Easter eggs into these maps as well, and this has got to be one of the best. Get transported into this hidden room, you have to run around the big particle accelerator room, shoot out specific lights around the area. Trying to find these things in the heat of battle is next to impossible, so finding this thing pretty much requires a comprehensive guide if you want any chance of actually doing it. Uh, so if you manage to hit them all, then you're automatically transported to an alternate reality version of the room with disco lights and, of course, dancing zombies. The centerpiece of this whole ridiculous room are that, the dancing zombie pallbearers, which is as strange as it sounds. Uh, after a while, you're automatically teleported back to the regular map, you're awarded with a box containing a free juggernaug and possibly a wonder weapon, which is a great reward for not really a lot of effort. But if all the room had was just a couple of dancing zombies, I'd consider that okay. The dancing pallbearer zombies, though, that's what make this uh, as goofy as it is in the best way. As a quick bonus, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach has a mystery room, uh, a secret room that can only be accessed through the end game of Security Breach. It requires you to have all the upgrades and a camera to get to. You have to take a picture of the blank wall, you do it right, it'll open, reveal a strange secret room where you can listen to the invisible tapes hidden all around the world. It's actually so well hidden that we have to mention it again here, even if it's something we've mentioned in a few other videos already. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications, and as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconHero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.